correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like more than ever now this generation has tools and the freedom without shame to talk about these things. Yes. And also on the other side, extreme, you know, it seems like more kids than ever are vaping, doing drugs, alcohol, having sex younger and younger, connected to their phones nonstop, not, you know, allowing themselves to really process. They're still using other things to mask the anxiety. Well, because as pressure to get into the right school, to make money, to be an influencer, to, 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 to figure out your life by the time you're perfect. 21, is all that pressure or perceived pressure mm-hmm. increases, so does your stress and anxiety. And as stress and anxiety increases, if you don't have the resources, tools, the right. support, so will your coping negative habits. Mm-hmm. Scrolling through social media, by the way, is something people do when they feel anxious. Why? Because they're using what's on their phone to distract themselves from the uncomfortable feelings in their body. But the irony is it usually just makes you more anxious to see other people's seemingly perfect life. Mm -hmm. Uh, What else do people do? They do all the things you're talking about. They vape, they procrastinate, they drink, Mm -hmm. they buy shit that they don't need, they play sports bets, they watch porn. They like All these things are ways to escape uncomfortable feelings in your body. They overeat, they, you know, like all of it. And so when you understand that at its core, anxiety is an alarm that is hardwired in your body Mm -hmm. to make you wake up. And what it's asking you to do is to give yourself a little bit of love and reassurance right now. I know you're sitting in a dorm room, I know you think you have no friends and everybody here already has their friend group and you're the loser, but you know what? You're not. It's got to be okay. You don't need to hit the pen. You can, you can literally tolerate that feeling of feeling alone. If you know that what that discomfort's about is really a need for love and connection. So give that to yourself in that Mm -hmm. moment. That's it. Learning to love yourself has been the next thing. Yeah. Um, how, how can someone start to learn how to love themselves if they never felt like they got it from their parents the way they needed it? How can they learn when they've always been on high alert, stressed, anxious, separate from the love they've always wanted? Okay, so there's two different things you need to do. First of all, you got to get serious about the body. You have two nervous systems, sympathetic and parasympathetic. I think about it like the wiring in your wall. So Lewis has these light bulbs behind us, right? What's fueling that? Electricity. There's wiring in there. If we were to flip the switch off, the wiring would still be there. What's happening when you feel stressed out or you have uh, unresolved trauma or you've just lived through a pandemic and you have not turned the light off is that the light's on. What we need to do as a society is find the switch and flip it off. Mm -hmm. And so the way you do that is going into your body. There's a bazillion different things that you can do. You can do cold exposure. You can meditate, you can do breathing exercises, you can um, do the high, start doing the high five in the mirror as part of your morning routine. You can give your heart a high five where you just place your hands right here in the center of your body and you tone what's called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is the on-off switch. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so when you Google vagus nerve and do those exercises as part of your day-to-day life, Going outside for a walk for 10 minutes is another way to, to like literally get back into your body and to find the switch and turn the light off. Because you've got to understand that when the lights are on, the sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, you're stressed out. Mm-hmm. When the light is off, you've now accessed peace. You're in the moment. You don't feel that stressed out. So body, 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 body. That's number one. Number two, even if it was never modeled for you, You know what you want. So get out a piece of paper and make a list of all the things that you wish somebody who loved you Mm -hmm. would do. Like there's this fascinating study, Lewis, about happy people. You know the difference between happy people and people who aren't happy? Tell me. Happy people tend to spend more time doing things that make them happy. Right. <laughs> Activities that they enjoy. Yeah. And 
we so underestimate the little things you can do Mm -hmm. because just a small uptick in your mood actually makes you feel a little better. I'm not suggesting that if your best friend just got killed in a car crash, Mm -hmm. going for a walk is going to fix it, but it might for a minute help you clear your mind. Like for me, if I'm having a bad day, I do one of two things. I either buy myself flowers and I'm not talking like a hundred dollar arrangement. Right, right. I go to Trader 15, Joe's, bucks, yeah. $2 for yeah. 10 to Affidels. I love Trader Joe's, right? Flowers make me smile. And then I have a bud vase right by the kitchen sink. And I always put one of the flowers right there because it makes me happy. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, yeah. but it just does. For just a minute, I see something beautiful and it allows me to escape whatever's making me sad, okay? Or I go to Netflix and I turn on one of the stand-up comedy specials because- Just laugh. I just just try to get somebody to make me laugh. And it always makes me feel slightly better. And if you can feel slightly better today, you can feel slightly better tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And these things start to build. And over time, that little uptick starts to become a new default. And so I think the same is true with love. Love is a verb. It's an action. So what are the actions that you believe a loving person would take if somebody really loved you and it wasn't modeled for you? And so when you start to make that list, there's your map. Pick one thing a day. And it might be You know, I high five the mirror as part of my morning routine as an act of love. I make my bed every morning as an act of love. I um, don't lay in bed and think about my problems as an act of love. I always have an amazing cup of coffee Mm -hmm. as an act of love. And, you know, oddly enough, if I'm up first, I make coffee for the person I love, Chris. And Chris does the same for me. And so just because it wasn't modeled doesn't mean you can't create a map for yourself. And so think about Mm -hmm. it. What would you want somebody to do? And then look around and who seems to have that in their life and what are the behaviors that you're seeing? Yeah. And then the million dollar thing you got to do. Do not wait to feel like doing it. You have to take that action first because the action is what proves that you love yourself. Mm -hmm. If you sit around and think about it, you're going to talk yourself out of it. And the fact that you're not doing anything, you're not taking action. Like if you make a list and you're like, oh, they would buy me flowers. They would compliment me. They would give me a high five. They would and buy you, me dinner. And you don't do it for yourself. You know what that shows you? I hate myself. Because right. a person that loves me would do these things. And I'm not doing that. So your own action demonstrates that you don't love yourself. Mm-hmm. It's powerful stuff, Mel. I'm so grateful for you for coming back on and sharing this wisdom. If people want more, they can go to the Mel Robbins podcast. Yeah, you know why I named it that? Tell me. Because when you Google Mel Robbins, it's the third thing that people say. (laughs) There you go. There you go. That's great. (laughs) Mel Robbins podcast. They can get it over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere. They want to listen to it. You have an amazing format where you're really diving in. You're answering questions. You're you're telling like a whole story throughout your show. Oh, it's really personal, cool. dude. It is so personal. It's really powerful. So make sure you guys go subscribe there, follow, leave a review. Actually, episode number two, which is called, mo- motiv- episode number three, which is all motivation, uh-huh. about hacking motivation. I talk extensively about my past with anxiety. Mm. And episode number four, which we have yet to title, is a two-hour interview with Dr. Russ Kennedy, who wow. you need to have on the show. Okay. And that is that out. that literally will make you realize everything that you think about anxiety is probably wrong. And that there are incredibly accessible, simple, game-changing tools. And you know why I like him? Dr. Kennedy is not only a medical doctor that treats anxiety, he's also got a degree in neuroscience. I love that. And he started experiencing anxiety when he was in medical school. And so he has personal experience having Mm -hmm. grown up with a bipolar father. I love that. And he treats people. He has written this incredible book about it. His tools are all about, what's it called, somatic therapy? Mm -hmm. Somatic healing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he gets the brain. He gets the body. He wraps it all in one package. Incredible. you got to get him on. Uh, Mel, appreciate you. Acknowledge you for how you keep showing up for yourself, for your relationship, for your life, for your community. 
uh, as beautiful to witness that you know, even though you've been extremely successful in different seasons of your life and you continue to succeed, you make a priority right now on your emotional, mental health as a, um, a focus so that you can keep going to the next level. So I really acknowledge you for how you show up. And I know you've been wanting to do the podcast for a while. So, I, so for you acting on it is an act of self-love. It is. It is. It's you beautiful. know what else, Lewis? If people were to go back and they were to look at our first interview five years ago, uh-huh. What they would witness are two totally different human beings energetically. Yeah. Because you and I have for the past two years been working at profound levels on our healing from the inside out, mm-hmm. especially in the body, especially in the nervous system, especially related to past trauma. And I would bet, I don't know this to be true, but I would bet that if you did a side by side, Mm. you would see, I'd probably have a flushed face. I'd probably be more jittery and around and animated and this and that. I mean, I'm pretty animated, but there is, and the same with you. Right. There is a groundedness that we have both Mm. accessed from the tools that you're sharing on your podcast that I'm now sharing on mine and that you and I have been deeply profoundly invested in Mm -hmm. exploring these past two years. I personally believe every human being, unless you are in therapy attacking this, or you have a massive meditation practice, I believe every single human being right now has their alarm turned on internally. Because for months on end, 